Hi, Gene Splice Gyarados with a Xenomorph, and it's terrifying. My name's Chris, and you're watching Inkling. I'm going to start off this build by scrunching up some tin foil and using it to make the basic form of Gyarados. This will give me a more solid base to start with, and stop the body wiggling around while I work. Next up, I'll put a thin layer of Sculpey on top and pop it in the oven for its first bake. As my most tried and trusted technique is to slap bits of stuff together and see how it looks, I made a complete mess of my first attempt to sculpt Gyarados' head, ripped it off, smacked it a bit, and started again. With a new head blob in place, I'll cut a notch about halfway down which I can then push and pull into a wide open mouth. I'll separate the top of his head from the jaw section by marking out a line and then squishing and rounding the forehead till it's smooth. I've got the basic jaw and mouth shape in place now, so I'll add a couple of nubbins to the chin to give Gary that chiseled bad boy look and smooth them into place. Then it's onto the cheeks where a string of clay is folded up to look like a mess of tendons or gills, chopped to size and then fitted into holes I carved out to get rid of my awful first attempt at cheeks, followed by a little blending into the surrounding skin. I'm going to flame grill a few tiny teeth ready to jam them into Gary's gummy jaws, which should give him a toothy winning smile. I'll pre-make some tooth sockets on the bottom jaw with this spiky little tool before I carefully squeeze the teeth into place with tweezers, making sure not to deform the mouth too much in the process. I'll carve some light groove texture into these thin, fin-shaped pieces of clay and then attach them to the rear of the head. I'll add a bony carapace to the back of the head, a la classic xenomorph, and smooth the bones down, blending them into the rest of the model. Once that's done, it's time to bake the head and set it in place. Our first mini disaster of the build happened off camera during the second bake, with the body cracking under the weight and tension of the head. Luckily, the face and teeth were undamaged, so I patched the crack, made a support for the model, rebaked, and then got to work on the scales. After several different scale making attempts, I settled on applying layers of clay and carving the scales into it. I then smoothed them into the shapes I wanted and got a nice layered effect, removing the excess as I went along and re-sculpting until I was satisfied. One last bake, and I'm happy with the results. Now it's on to the painting. I found this airbrush in a charity shop recently, and I'm still kind of learning how to use it. For now, I'll start off with a base coat of white all over. Once that's dried, I'll give them a few coats of blue on top until I get the color I'm looking for, and a bone white on the underbelly, trying to get a nice transition around the face. I'll paint a few details around the face and it's onto that gaping mouth. Starting off with a bright pink and working in layers till I get a realistic fleshy tone. I'll paint the upper gums, inner mouth and tongue. Time for the teeth to be painted white and then browned with a thin wash of ochre yellow. I'm applying a few glazes around the mouth to make the most of that skin tone transition and it's onto the snaky looking scale markings. Although Gyarados has an extra layer of pale scales along his sides, I thought I'd apply the most markings to help him look like a realistic reptile amphibian monstrosity. After a few touches of detail around the edges, it's time to get Gary wet. 
I'll give them a quick coat and varnish all over and then carefully tease out some strands of UV curing resin between the teeth and tongue till I pull off a slimy looking salivating mouth. Next I'll use some XPS foam, cut to size for my base and prime it black. While I mix up a paste of polyfiller, PVA glue, sand, and some paint. Smoothing it on top of the base with my incredibly cute tiny trowel. I'll wait for it to dry before applying more sand and pebbles and fixing them in place with some watered down PVA glue. With that dried, I'll paint multiple layers of brown, realize that it's way too dark, and paint more layers on top of those layers until the top layers look more like an earthy color. I'll then dry brush the surface with a highlight to get a realistic look. Out comes the glue gun and perspex to create a barrier within which we're going to pour our resin. I measure out the correct amount of resin, realize the ratio of catalyst is 1 to 100 by volume, Ask myself who the hell designs a resin in those ratios and hunt around my house for a pipette to measure with. Then I'll add a few drops of pigment to achieve a watery colour, stir and pour over the diorama, with my fingers crossed that nothing will go wrong. Once cured is a simple process of removing the perspex and revealing the perfectly cast diorama within. Or not. The gloves came out when the acrylic snapped and cut my fingers pretty bad, and that was shortly followed by a gasp of horror once I realised the resin had somehow bonded to the perspex and there was no way I could separate the two. In my frustration, I used a mitre saw to cut the edges of the diorama off, clean the sides up the best I could, and swear to myself never to try water effects again. And so guys, it's time for the glamour shots. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more of the same in the future, and thanks for watching Inkling.